Welcome back everybody. For today's Friday Five, we are counting down my top five favorite Acura cars. Now I'm not gonna lie, I don't really have like five clear favorites or anything. I don't, I just don't have that much of an opinion towards Acura to be honest. If you asked me that question for like BMW or Audi, that would be pretty tricky. But nonetheless, of all the Acuras I know, I did come up with a list of the top five in my opinion. I'm planning to do one for every major car manufacturer brand company. So obviously we're starting it off with Acura and then we'll eventually end up with, I think Volvo is the last one. Hoping I can get to there. I don't know if I'll make it all the way to Volvo, but we'll see. So without further ado, let's just get into it. This is my top five favorite Acuras. Starting off with our number five pick, the Acura TLX A-Spec Super Handling All-Wheel Drive. That's a pretty long name. The TLX is Acura's modern sports sedan. To be quite honest, I don't really have too much to say about this one. I do like this car, but it's like nowhere in my top 100 or anything like that. However, for the Acura brand specifically, it takes the number five spot. The styling is decent, the technology is there, and the driving dynamics can be exciting. It also kind of looks like a stormtrooper. Like I know everyone says that about every white and black car ever, but seriously, with the grill and the headlights, just that layout, it just reminds me so much of like the Stormtrooper helmet. I don't know, I, I can't unsee it. Actually, I'm not even talking about the colors, I'm just talking about the design. Like the headlights are look like the eye holes and then the, the grill looks like the mouth bit or whatever the thing is. I don't know, I'm sure someone out there who knows a lot about Star Wars is gonna be absolutely livid that I didn't call it the Aspirator 9000 or something. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Obviously I haven't driven like pretty much any of these cars, so can't really speak for that kind of thing, but as far as everything else goes, I have formed an opinion about it. If I switched over from my car to the TLX, I think it would be a pretty similar experience, to be honest. I mean, obviously they're in the same market and everything, so not too much to say about that. I just had to fill the number five spot. Number four, the Acura RSX. This is a very common car of choice for young car enthusiasts all around. You know, I remember kids in high school would be stoked if they if they actually had one. Uh, I remember a couple kids specifically. One one of them had a blue one with no spoiler and a pretty pretty rusty body. <laughs> of course, they liked it for good reason too. It's a small two-door front-wheel drive car with a bit of pep. I mean, not much you can go wrong with there. <laughs> this was actually one of the first cars that I wanted to buy and actually had the means to do so. If we're being specific, I wanted an 06 RSX Type S with the rear spoiler. I mean, you can kind of tell that my taste has shifted ever so slightly. Other than that, I have no other like specific feelings towards this car. I mean, it's a great car if you're looking for your first car and you want a fun two-door. It's a small, fun car with a ton of potential customizability. I mean, just look at this thing, for example. That wing is huge, geez. <laughs> It's a very good choice for younger car guys, whether you're on a budget or not. If you want to experiment with cars, I'd say this is probably a great way to go. I mean, any Honda really is a great way to go. This one specifically. If you prefer two doors, there you go. Number three is the Integra Type R. It was kind of a toss up between the RSX and the Integra for the number three and fourth spot until I remembered that the Integra has a Type R version. So naturally, the Integra Type R snatched that number three spot. The Integra Type R, that's a lot of T's and R's. <laughs> the Integra Type R is a bit special since it's a special edition of the Integra. It has better overall dynamics than the standard Tegi and the fact that, it, at least in my opinion, people are drawn to it more than the RSX. Uh, I feel like, for me, it comes down to personal preference. If you're in the market for a two-door Acura, the RSX and the Integra can trade punches all day, to be honest, so. It really comes down to personal preference, whether you like one or not, just based on whatever you judge your cars on. Of course, just like the RSX, this has a ton of customizability options. Customizing options? Custom... Eh, whatever. Just, you, know, you, you can change it, is what I'm saying. Even the normal Integra is very, very customizable. I've only ever seen like three or four Integras in my life, to be honest. I don't know if I'm just missing all of them that drive by, or I just happen to not know that many people that drive Taggies, but um, yeah, I knew an older guy who drove one, drove like a dark purple one, that was kind of cool. That was the first one I saw. And then I knew some guy in high school who drove one wrapped in this crazy blue color. It was kind of cool at the time, but looking back at it now is, eh, I don't know, I mean, you know, if, if you if you liked it, then I guess you liked it. That's that's great. <laughs> that's fun. So for our number three spot, the Teggy Type R definitely deserves it. Um, it's a rose among the slightly less appealing roses, I guess. <laughs> Coming in at number two, our runner-up is the new Honda NSX. 
Okay, I know, kind of a big jump here from like a 200 horsepower front wheel drive car to a six figure brand new hybrid supercar, but it's here for good reason. Number two for me is the new NSX. Despite what a lot of people think about this, in my opinion, it's a great supercar by any stretch. Lots of horsepower? Check. Technology that is state of the art or even innovative? Check. Good looks? Well, for me, it's like a seven out of 10, but like a strong seven, you know what I mean? can't go any higher though because it comes with chrome trim in the front like from the factory and that is a huge huge turnoff for me huge turnoff if you like it though that's completely fine you do you you can like chrome all you want when this thing first came out it was soaked in some good old controversy just like the new Supra, the hype definitely played a part in that. For a lot of people, it was just simply impossible to live up to what the excitement had built to. The question was going around whether it was going to be a Ferrari killer just like its predecessor. Was it going to be Honda saving grace, their new poster boy? Would it do for the company what the R8 did for Audi? And I mean, in the end, it sort of, sort of did. Fun fact, actually, Tony Stark in the first Avengers actually drives the RSX, or RSX. The NSX. Yeah, that was, I'm pretty sure that was pre-production. But again, for some reason, the result for most people was disappointing. A turbocharged hybrid V6? Whack. Less than 600 horsepower? Whack. Doesn't break the revered 200 mile per hour barrier? Whack. Just not good enough. Here's my two cents. Yes, it's a turbo V6 hybrid, but it's enough to get from zero to 60 in under three seconds. Let me say that again. It's a turbo V6 hybrid, and it's enough to get from zero to 60 in under three seconds. That's faster than any car I've ever driven, let alone been inside. It's faster than most production cars anyone's probably ever driven. Here's what I say to some of the criticism. Doesn't have at least 600 horsepower? Well, last time I checked, 573 is plenty. I don't wanna sound all preachy and you know, whatever, but we are very, very desensitized by power figures and numbers in general. I mean, come on, the Mercedes AMG GTR, one of the most capable supercars as of late, has less power than this. Yeah. I'm fairly positive that any car guy can enjoy and appreciate 573 horsepower. Probably. To be honest, I just, I wouldn't know, but I would love to. And yeah, it doesn't quite crack 200 miles per hour, but then again, when's the last time you went 191 miles per hour? In my opinion, the great James May summed it up perfectly. I really, really like it, and I find myself wanting one quite badly. Doesn't get much better than that. Quick honorable mention, I feel like I have to insert the Acura Legend in this list somewhere. Kinda has like a cult following. I don't really have an opinion on it. I mean, apparently it was Acura's first car to even have a V6, so... That's, that's pretty important, I guess. It did a lot for Japanese cars in North America, so I guess we do owe a little bit to the Acura Legend. With that out of the way, we are at number one, finally. My top pick, of course, who didn't see this coming? The original Acura NSX. Oh yes, the turn of the decade in 1990 introduced the Acura NSX. Yeah, I know the NSX is technically a Honda, but I mean, here it's badged as an Acura, um, therefore I will categorize it as such. Besides, I needed these two to fill out my top five or else I would have had a lot of trouble looking for another two, so, uh, but that's not important. I love this thing. I really, really love this thing. This for me is easily in the top 10 cars to come out before the turn of the century, before the year 2000, maybe even top five. I just don't have that much of an opinion towards Acura to be honest. And here's why I love it. In 1990, the best sports cars came out of a little continent called Europe, especially the overlords that were Porsche and Ferrari. These two were the companies to go to for all your needs of speed in the 80s and 90s. However, also around this time was McLaren's domination of Formula One. Yeah, somehow we got back to this. I talked about F1 in my last video, and I'm talking about it in this video. Maybe it's just a thing now. Maybe it's just because I miss it too much. The McLaren F1 cars were actually powered by Honda engines. And who was driving for the McLaren Honda team around that time? Oh yes, the best F1 driver in my opinion of all time, Mr. Senna. Without him, it's extremely likely that the NSX would have been known today as the Honda sports car that flopped. Why? Well, because he worked with the engineers and developers to make this car as great as it is. When he first drove it, he didn't like it. Yeah, he just he got out and told them, yeah, it's not good enough. So from that point on, the developers decided to take him on to use his experience feedback to make their car better. And boy, are we glad that they did that because now 
It's a legend. Well, actually, not to be confused with the Acura legend, but you know, you know what I mean. This car became known at the time for being a car from Honda, a company that's used to making small, tiny hatchbacks that would look fearlessly into the eyes of Ferrari and Porsche. Yeah, that was a that was a tall order. It had the power, it had the handling, obviously, and it had the looks. Oh, did it have the looks? Let me just okay. Let's just go on a tangent here. Just looking at this is enough to make my knees weak sometimes. This picture of me at a show sums it up pretty well. It had the looks. It was a looker for sure. In fact, here's a list of things that are personally less evocative than simply looking at a red NSX. Parachuting with a plastic bag. Running away from a pack of raptors. Playing the knife game. Sending that risky text. Receiving death threats in person. Supermodels. Using a bathroom with no lock. Lily Collins, but only by a small margin. Forgetting to do what your mom angrily tells you to do before she leaves the house, only to remember it as she pulls into the driveway. Realizing you forgot to plug in your headphones. And other things I have totally done in the past. By looks alone, this was, in my opinion, way ahead of its time. Like, way ahead. Even today, I think it looks, I think it looks great. New cars these days absolutely can look good. But the NSX has that kind of classic beauty that no one can deny. It's like Audrey Hepburn, or me, when I was 15 years old. No it's, no, it's definitely not true. It definitely helps that this car has pop-up headlights. A supercar with pop-up headlights. Those were the days. This and of course the beautiful Porsche 911 of the same era are the two modern retro cars I will never stop loving. Well, that's the end of another Friday Five. If you're watching this and you have a strong opinion about Acura cars in general, just drop a comment in it down below and we can discuss what you like and what you don't like and if you agree or disagree with my choices. If not, you're just here to watch. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your time. For the next Friday Five, we're gonna talk about my top five Alfa Romeos. That's gonna be interesting, actually. That's gonna be really interesting. There's a healthy mix of brand new and classic and what I like to call modern retro cars. I don't know if that's like an actual thing, but I don't know, I just, I just dubbed it modern retro cars. Basically for me it's just cars that aren't really old enough to be considered like retro, like super retro or anything. I'd say pretty much anything after the 90s was pretty modern. If you made it this far, congratulations, good job, I applaud you. Apparently not many people can sit through 10 minutes of me talking about cars. You can, so uh, good on you. <laughs> All right, we're gonna end it here. Thank you for watching. Turn that red subscribe button into a gray one. Turn that gray like button into a blue one. Drop a comment, whatever you want. All right, that's it, boys. I'll see you later. Get to eat. Yes, it is time to munch.